Prolog supports meta predicates. What is a meta predicate? First, consider this interaction. We state here that goal is a certain prolog term, and then we post the goal dynamically. This means that the goal only becomes known at runtime, that is, only when the query is actually posted. And when we do post this, we see that the goal is actually called because x is now 3, which is the result of 1 plus 2. So Prolog is a very dynamic language and supports dynamic calls. This feature is called MetaCall and it is automatically available in Prolog as a built-in feature. We can make the call explicit with the call slash n family of predicates. So this is equivalent to what we had above. The built-in predicate call invokes the goal that is specified in its argument. And in fact, if this predicate were not available, we could implement it in Prolog by using one clause per predicate, where we simply call the predicate that is indicated in the argument. So this would be a sample definition. And of course, that is not how the predicate is actually implemented, but we could do it that way if it weren't available. And the call slash n family of predicates even goes beyond this in that it lets us add arguments to a goal before it is called. So when we post this, for example, we see from the answer that this is equivalent to x equals a. So we see that the argument a was added to the partial goal. And prolog predicates that take predicates or goals as arguments are called higher order predicates or meta predicates. So this answers the original question, what a meta predicate is. And depending on the meta predicate, a predicate may be specified by its predicate indicator or as for example in this case, by a goal or partial goal. So meta predicates let us dynamically call, inspect and in fact even change predicates. And we are of course mostly interested in calling predicates, certainly not in changing them dynamically because changing a predicate at runtime makes your programs much harder to understand and debug. So for us, the primary advantage of meta predicates is that they can help us write short and correct programs because we will use meta predicates mostly as useful abbreviations and building blocks for code patterns that arise in practice. So let's consider a few important meta predicates. We start with the maplist family of meta predicates. Maplist 2 and Maplist 3 are among the most useful and most frequently used meta predicates. Maplist 2 lets us lift a relation to a list of elements. And I use underscore 1 here to indicate that the goal will be called with one additional argument. For instance, we can express that all elements in a list are equal. So on backtracking, we get lists where that is the case. So when you see a pattern like this in your code, where a predicate must hold for each of x, y, z, and so on, then you can shorten this with maplist. And maplist3 lifts a relation to corresponding pairs of elements using two lists. So if maplist3 weren't available, we could implement it using call with three arguments. For example, if both lists are empty, maplist holds, no matter what the predicate is. And second, if there is at least one element in both lists, then the predicate must hold for these two elements. And I'm again using the naming convention underscore two to indicate that the goal is called with two additional arguments. And maplist must hold for the remaining elements in both lists. And that would be a sample definition of maplist3. So for example, suppose we have a predicate integer successor relating an integer to its successor. Then we can use maplist3 to relate 
lists of integers to their respective successors. And of course, since this is a general relation, we can also use the same predicate to relate lists of integers to their respective predecessors, uh, as in this case. So the predicate works in all directions and maplist retains this generality. Therefore, when you see a pattern like this in your code, you can shorten it with maplist. And analogously, you can use maplist4 and so on for predicates with more arguments. Another very useful group of meta predicates is the fold L family of predicates. This means folding a list from the left. Let's consider an example as motivation for these predicates. Suppose we want to find the maximum in a list of integers. Okay, first of all, that's a very imperative way to phrase this task and suggests only one direction of use because this suggests that the list is given and we must find the maximum. But as declarative programmers, we of course want to aim for something more general. We want to describe the maximum in a list of integers because we want to be able to generate, test and complete such lists in all directions, even if no elements are initially given. So we want to describe a relation between a list of integers and its maximum element. For the empty list, there is no maximum element. So this can only hold if the list has at least one element. So when does it hold that M is the maximum of such a list? For this, we use an auxiliary predicate. I like to use an underscore at the end of auxiliary predicates, especially when a predicate has more arguments that are not part of the name. And this predicate shall be a relation between the remaining elements of the list, the maximum element seen so far. So initially, the first element of the original list is the maximum element seen so far, because it is also the only element seen so far. And third, the maximum element of the whole list. And this auxiliary predicate is easy to define. If there are no remaining elements, then the maximum element seen so far is identical to the maximum of the whole list. And second, if there is at least one remaining element L, then we must define the relation between the remaining elements, the maximum element seen so far, denoted by M0, and the maximum of the whole list, denoted by M. So first of all, let's say that M1 is the maximum of L and M0. This means that M1 can be regarded as the maximum seen so far if we also take into account the list element L. Now we only have to relate the remaining elements Ls, the maximum seen so far, which is M1, and the overall maximum M of the list. And that's straightforward because this is the relation that we are defining. So this is simply the relation between Ls, M1 and M. And this pattern is something that we encounter very often when reasoning about lists. So you can think about this pattern as folding over a list in the sense that we have a relation that carries along a state while considering each element of the list. And it is a fold from the left in the sense that the list elements are considered from left to right. Now, the point of the fold L family of meta predicates is that we can shorten such relations considerably. We write fold from the left over a predicate indicated by a partial goal. Let's call it maximum underscore. We fold over the list LS where the initial state is L and the final state is M. So we now need to describe the relation for the list element under consideration, then the state up to here, let's call it M0, and the next state M. And in our case, the next state is the maximum of L and M0, and that's all. So the meta predicate automatically calls the indicated goal with the necessary arguments so that this works exactly as before. So every time you are reasoning about lists in this way, you can use fold L to shorten the code like this. Here's a sample query and corresponding answer. 
then there are predicates that let us collect all solutions of a goal. For example, we can ask for all solutions if x is a concrete integer between 1 and 3. And as answer, we get a list of all values that x can assume. This is called a spatial as opposed to a temporal representation because the solutions are now available as an explicit list in memory instead of appearing over time on backtracking. Be careful though, because these are non-monotonic predicates. And this means that if you use these predicates, then for example, adding new facts to your program may cause queries to fail that were previously true, which of course runs counter to the logical properties we expect from classical logic, where adding information can at most lead to more conclusions that can be derived, never to fewer conclusions. And when you break such properties, then reasoning about your programs becomes a lot harder. So be careful with these features. In particular, we can express not provable in terms of all solution predicates. So this is an example of a predicate that can fail if we add new facts to the program. Another important meta predicate is if underscore. If underscore and several related predicates are described in the paper Indexing diff by Ulrich Neumeckel and Stefan Kral. Notably, if underscore lets us make sound case distinctions. Sound means that the predicate only commits to a branch when it is correct to do so. For instance, we can make a case distinction depending on whether x is equal to a. And in response, we get one solution where x is indeed equal to a. However, this is not the only possibility and therefore we get another answer which applies if x is different from a. So the point here is that at the time the decision is called for, we can't safely commit to one branch and therefore both possibilities are shown. And building on if underscore, there are several other predicates such as t member, t filter and t partition, which for example let us partition a list based on such sound case distinctions. So check out the paper for more information. And these were only a few very common examples of meta predicates. There are many other notable meta predicates such as conjunction and disjunction because these are of course also predicates to take predicates as arguments. Catch is a predicate that lets us catch and reason about exceptions when a predicate is invoked. Setup call cleanup is an important meta predicate that guarantees that the cleanup is executed after calling a goal. Lambda expressions as provided by library Lambda and several others. And there is one important point to consider when discussing these things. This is all work in progress. This means that in the future, several other useful meta predicates may be found and may also become very relevant. So. The challenge lies in finding such useful building blocks and in implementing them efficiently while preserving desirable properties. For example, for a very nice collection of useful meta predicates, see for instance the proposal An Elementary Prolog Library by Richard O'Keefe. And this proposal contains descriptions of many meta predicates, which are often inspired by constructs from other languages, such as APL and Lisp.